Well, we're in uh, Bigfoot country here. We're near Reamer, Minnesota, and there's just so many beautiful backwoods lakes. There's so much public forest land. I mean, it's just massive, but this is, you know, the north woods of Minnesota. On all this public forest land, you know, there's just these, these small tucked away lakes that are back in the sticks. And where was Justin Wheezy today, but we're gonna explore some of this water and just try to find some nice quality pan fish. You know, that's why people come up here, you know, snowmobile and ice fish, these remote secluded lakes. Lots of slush out here. I don't think you could get out here right now without a snowmobile. Hopefully in the next few weeks, it's gonna freeze up and firm up where people can get out a lot easier, but all that matters is that we made it. Oh, that's a good fish. There's a nice one. Right back down to the bottom. Sir, one of the powerful freshwater fish that swims right there. Oh yeah, here we go. We are hooked up. Oh, I never get tired of this. These fish just free traded. Oh my. Wow. The whole thing, the biggin'. That is what we're talking about tonight, a cool looking fish. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by Shields. Vexilar, Clam, K Drill, Ice Armor by Clam, Crestliner, North Dakota Tourism, Clam Pro Tackle, Bismarck Motor Company. Travel Manitoba, and Jason Mitchell Elite Series Fishing Rods. You know what the best part about this is? Nobody out here. No. <laughs> You're probably Perfect. used to this, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. We're gonna probably need chest waders by the end of the day. They're pretty much stacked down there. A lot of fish around. There. You know, so this program is just classic bays and crappie fishing since we're just using that tungsten jig, which really shines, especially if you're fishing over 20 feet of water. And just using that, that Mackie plastic, that's just a kind of a bigger profile. I think that's important out here because these fish can see it from further away. And so these fish might be 10, 15 feet off to the side of you at times. And you can pull them. The other thing that happens is you can lift these fish up and that's important as well. But just three pound monofilament, and then just that dead meat rod. You see that, that soft tip? It's just a perfect crappie rod. I'm using a spooler reel here today, but you know, just classic crappie fishing. A lot of times we're dropping the transducer down, swinging it a little bit. And if you're seeing fish, fish. If not, just go to the next hole. It's just a fast, efficient way to, to just to break down this water. There we go. Yeah, that's a good fish. You like this rod. Oh. Hey, that's what we're looking for. Nice old slab crappie. You know, this is a good sized fish and I like to throw back anything like over 11 inches in this lake. You know, it's just good for it keep you know those eight to nine ten inches for eating but ones like this are just these are great to put back in lake and for the future be a next 16 incher you know the lake we're fishing today it's not one of those lakes where it's got lake maps or anything like that i mean there's there is a lake map but it's it's nothing you can go off because it, you don't we don't have technology on the phone and it's you get out here you kind of just got to start drilling holes i mean drill out grids i mean you kind of map the lake yourself and that's what makes these lakes so much fun is it's it's an adventure all in itself. Especially on these backwoods lakes, we chase a lot of basin fish. 
these fish are they're moving around in the deepest parts of the lake or right on the edges of those deepest parts so what we do is we just drill and we just keep hole hopping we use our vexlars just you know find that school of fish and sometimes you just got to keep on moving even when you find the fish because some of them are small and sometimes they're not biting but there's always going to be active fish somewhere in that lake You know, it seems like so many places where we fish for crappies, you can't go wrong with just pink and white. So that's what I'm using here, just that white Wonder Bread jig, which is one of my favorite colors. And just that pink Mackie. It's a larger profile, but that is just money, pink and white on so many different bodies of water. Ooh, yeah, look at that one. That's a good one there. There we go. <laughs> I tell you what, he ain't a bad fish, show. <laughs> oh, come on up. Yeah, just a, yeah, some of these fish, I mean, they're, they're lifting up two or three feet, which is a big thing, you know. Suspended fish, you know, find that ceiling. You know, you've got a pack of fish, it might be three feet of fish, five feet of fish, whatever, but do you have to, can you raise that fish a foot? Can you raise that fish two feet, three feet? You know, if you can start raising those fish up or, you know, you just get them to separate and get them to climb, just keep those fish rising up. And a lot of times that's, a, that's the key to catching them, especially on these plastics and just getting those aggressive strikes. There's literally fish in every hole. You know, I don't know how big this lake is. It's not that big of a lake you can see around it here, but you know, there's a, 40 foot hole and we're just right off the edge of it here and you know, these fish are just wintering out here just classic crappie pattern but it seems like the deal is, is there's fish everywhere it seems like when you first drop down you catch some of the more aggressive and some of the bigger fish then you have five feet of fish below you that you can hardly get to move or bite and then just a batter just make it a five yard move and just keep bouncing around and picking off fresh fish Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. A Vexilar is responsible for more fish being caught than any other piece of equipment you could buy. You know what? Fishing lures and gadgets have come and gone over the last 60 years. But Vexilar's mission statement has been true, helping anglers catch more fish. Vexilar is the gold standard in sonar performance and reliability in flasher sonar technology. Your ice fishing adventure begins and ends with a Vexlar by your side. Happy 60th Vexlar! Introducing the Rise Float Suit with Motion Float Technology. Breathable, waterproof, secure, and all the features that make the difference. Waterproof cell phone pocket, rapid drain system, and maximum flexibility. Fish with security in the Rise Float Suit from Ice Armor by Clam. Rise above. Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. series of hubs, the Clam C series shelters work best for us. Hey, what's our favorite ice sub shelter? The X series from Clam Outdoors. Yeah. Choose the hub shelter that's right for you at Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. got these lakes back here that they don't get touched there's so many of them where they may only see less than a dozen anglers a year you can get these big slab crappies you can get you know the big bluegills there's the sky's the limit really I mean we got panfish lakes around here we got bass lakes we got you know northern's walleyes we even got lake trout and um, stream trout 
So it's kind of a diverse thing to do. I mean, it's you kind of just pick and go. Ooh. Well, that was it's a nice fish. It's getting that evening time. They're moving up a little shallower. It's around 25 feet, and you know, the fish are kind of around that, you know, foot, two feet off the bottom. We're just kind of dropping a jig down just above them, and they're actually just coming up and starting to take it with a little bit of finesse. Yeah, there we go. Back in the bottom, I guess. Oh no. Do I still got, oh my gosh, I still got the fish. That's the thing, we've been out here. I mean, we've drilled. You know, we've went through four batteries. I mean, four or five man batteries, that's quite a bit. You know, we're probably around 200 holes almost, I would say. You know, it's a perfect time of day. These fish are just kind of, they're coming up. They're getting in that, you know, the nighttime feed mode, coming up on these shallow flats. And, you know, we just kind of, we're out here kind of middle of nowhere and we just kind of luckily just landed upon this group here i mean that's the nice thing about these lakes that are back in here you don't know where you're really drilling until you you know you drill it out and put your vexillars down to map it you know one thing too you know you get over these deep bowls or basins like this where you got suspended fish you know typically crappies are what you're going to find but but also lives out in these locations are tulipy or whitefish. And the easiest way that I know of as far as telling the difference as far as what you're fishing for as far as a mark on your vexilar is that whitefish or tulipies will accelerate and they'll dart in and dart out a lot more. The other thing too is drop the lure down. If, if the mark, if the fish that you're seeing on the vexilar can chase that lure down, especially with some speed, you're dealing with tulipies or whitefish. You know to keep, just keep moving if, if you're targeting crappies. But crappies will basically just sit and then they just rise a lot slower. They just have a more deliberate movements. And so just an easy way to identify the marks that you're seeing. You also see bait fish clutter where it just kind of flicker in and flicker out. You know, that's obviously not what you're looking for. But typically when you do get on crappies, you know, it just could be just this nice red mark. You know, Justin had been on this particular body of water before where he knew where the deeper hole is, which is classic crappie fishing 101 in the sense that a lot of times these fish will pull out over a hole and suspend during the winter time. And so Justin knew where the hole was on this lake, but you know, we just drilled a grid of holes and it was, it was pretty typical crappie fishing in the sense that you're marking fish. And a lot of times some of the first fish you catch out of a hole are some of the nicer fish in the sense that maybe one, two, three fish and then they get smaller and they get harder to catch. And that's pretty typical. And so, you know, we you know spend maybe 10, 15 minutes in a hole at the most, and then we just drop to the next hole. And a lot of times we wouldn't even fish if we didn't mark fish, you know, when we put our vexilar in that hole. And so, you know, just a matter of just, you know, making little small moves and, and working the grid. And you know, a lot of times that's how, you know, you catch fish when they're suspended over these, over these bowls or basins. You know, so I'm just hopping from hole to hole here. I'm going to turn my gain up a little bit and I'm just going to rock that transducer back and forth. And a lot of times what you'll do is you'll see fish on the edge of the cone angle. You, you can just sweep with it a little bit. There's fish in this hole right here. Oh yeah. Some of these fish are just slacklining me. You know, they come up <laughs> three, four feet to hit it. Oh yeah. Got a face full of slush. There, oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, they're just eating these jigs. 
Beautiful. You know, this is that remote backwoods Minnesota secret lake crappie fishing that I think everybody thinks about. You have to have the right attitude if you're going to explore these lakes in the sense that you're not going to get any fishing reports, you're not going to get a lot of intel, and you just have to go explore. And I tell you what, I mean, there's going to be some days where you get stuck and buried in slush, or you, you know, you get to a lake that looks like it has potential on a map and it's just a marsh. All there is is wild rice. I mean, you know, you can go down a lot of dead ends out here, but it's worth that exploration. I mean, that's how you find some of these really special spots is just put in the work. There's so many lakes around here, so much potential, you know, especially for pan fish, you know, as far as these backwood lakes, you know, some of these lakes are good numbers lakes where you catch a lot of fish. Some of these lakes have big fish potential. You know, one thing's for certain, we're in Reamer, Minnesota. There's Bigfoot pictures all over. There's cut out Bigfoot. We haven't even seen a Bigfoot since we've been here. I think there's been more wolf tracks than Bigfoot tracks. And so I think we got to talk to the city council here in Reamer and just see what this is all about. It's almost like false advertising. I came here and I was expecting to see a Bigfoot. I haven't seen a track. You know, I think the wolves ate them. 